In this lecture, we are going to look at extrinsic aids, that is Hansard and rule in pepper and heart. What is Hansard? In the past, the courts were not allowed to refer to parliamentary material prepared for the statutes. They are Hansard. In the case of Davis against Johnson, the House of Lords held that it has always been a well-established and salutary rule that Hansard can never be referred to by counsel in court and therefore can never be relied on by the court in construing a statute or for any other purpose. In the same case, at the Court of Appeal stage, Lord Denning had stated that interpreting statutes without referring to Hansard would be like groping in the dark without switching on the light. Lord Denning was reprimanded for referring to Hansard by the House of Lords. Lord Scarman stated that there are two good reasons why the courts should refuse to have regard to what is said in Parliament or by ministers as aids to the interpretation of a statute. What are those two good reasons? First, such material is an unreliable guide to the meaning of what is enacted. It promotes confusion, not clarity. The cut and thrust of debate and the pressures of executive responsibility, essential features of open and responsible government, are not always conducive to a clear and unbiased explanation of the meaning of statutory language. And the volume of parliamentary and ministerial utterances can confuse by its very size. Second reason is that counsel are not permitted to refer to Hansard in argument. So long as this rule is maintained by parliament, it is not the creation of the judges, it must be wrong for the judge to make any judicial use of proceedings in parliament for the purpose of interpreting statutes. Later on, in the case of Pixton against Freeman's PLC, the court referred to Hansard to establish the intention behind the Equal Pay Act 1979. It was also held that the explanatory notes attached to a statutory instrument could be used to identify the mischief, although they were not part of the statute. Let's look at the case of Pepper, Inspector of Taxes against Hart, famously known as Pepper versus Hart Rule. This change of the court's position in relation to Hansard, as we discussed earlier, was finally settled in this case. The defendants were receiving benefits at a private school in the form of reduced education fee for their children. The tax inspector sought to tax those benefits in kind. The question was whether the reduced fees can be treated as a taxable benefit under Section 63 of the Finance Act 1976. Parliamentary debates had discussed the issue and the parties sought to rely upon Hansard. In this case, Lord Griffiths stated that the days have passed when the courts adopted a literal approach. The courts use a purposive approach which seeks to give effect to the purpose of legislation and are prepared to look at much extraneous material that bears upon the background against which the legislation was enacted. Lord Brown Wilkinson ruled, My lords, I have come to the conclusion that as a matter of law, there are sound reasons for making a limited modification to the existing rule, subject to strict safeguards, unless there are constitutional or practical reasons which outweigh them. In my judgment, subject to the questions of the privilege, Subject to the questions of the privileges of the House of Commons, reference to parliamentary material should be permitted as an aid to the construction of legislation. However, the court restricted the use of Hansard only to where the legislation is either ambiguous or leads to an absurdity, and this is the current position. Lord Brown Wilkinson stated, reference to parliamentary material should be permitted as an aid to the construction of legislation which is ambiguous or obscure, or the literal meaning of which leads to an absurdity. Even in such cases, references in court to parliamentary material should only be permitted where such material clearly discloses the mischief aimed at or the legislative intention lying behind the ambiguous or obscure words. In the case of statements made in Parliament, as at present advised, I cannot foresee that any statement other than the statement of the Minister or other promoter of the Bill is likely to meet these criteria. In the next lecture, we will look at extrinsic aids, light of statutes and in peri materia rule. See you in the next lecture.